Africa welcomes the United Nations Security Council's resolution for a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. The suspension of hostilities is expected to lapse at the end of the holy month of Ramadan in two weeks' time. Now, Pretoria is further calling for a permanent ceasefire in the Israeli-Hamas conflict, uh, which has been raging for more than five months. Meanwhile, the African Christian Democratic Party says the world has forgotten about the October 7th attack on Israel by members of the Islamic resistance movement, Hamas. ACDP leader Reverend Kenneth Mishra uh, joins us now, as well as international relations expert Aisha Kaji uh, on uh, this conversation. Good evening to you both, and thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, for joining us uh, this uh, evening. Let's start uh, right there uh, with the... Uh, announcement earlier on in the week, I think it was on Monday, that the UN Security Council has called for a ceasefire, however be it, uh, for at least the next two weeks, not a permanent one. Now, Reverend, uh, your uh, member MP, a, a Mari Sukas, is, um, of course, so with the uh, South African Friends of Israel, uh, making a call uh, for uh, saying that it's time for men and women of integrity and morality to take a stand uh, for peace. Why is the ACDP uh, not saying anything about this resolution of the UN Security Council? Well, we obviously welcome the call for a ceasefire, but the ACDP would like to see a permanent ceasefire. And for a permanent ceasefire to exist and to last, as the word permanent says, there needs, there needs to be an acceptance of the right of Israel to exist within safe and secure borders. Because without that, particularly while hostages are still kept by Hamas, I don't see it happening. We also need to ensure that uh, Hamas gives the number of hostages that are still holding captive. Mm and how many of them are still alive, because they were very dodgy in telling the world how many yeah. hostages are still kept and are alive. So, Rev, you are aware that the UN sent its repertoire there in, 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 in uh, uh, Gaza to, to go on a fact-finding mission, and some, some rather interesting... Uh, maybe even uh, scary numbers are coming out of there. In the five months, uh, over 30,000 Palestinians said to have been killed, 13,000 of them being children, uh, and um, 71,000 injured, life-changing mutilations in most cases. 70% of the residential areas destroyed and 80% of the whole population has been forcibly uh, displaced. How, how do you look at those numbers um, and, 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 and not want to, just based on those numbers, call for a permanent ceasefire? I must say that those numbers obviously are heartbreaking. The situation there is heart-rendering. Nobody in their right mind would be happy without such statistics of people, particularly women and children, losing their lives. But people who have been following what has been happening in that area will know that Hamas has been using women and children as human shields. And we don't have or we don't hear enough of the world condemning the use of women and children as human shields. Now, we believe as men, as a man, I believe that if we are men enough, you don't like me, you want to fight me, let's move away from women and children. Mm. Be men, be in the open for everybody to see. Those are men fighting without involving women and children. So for as long as women and children are used, for as long as hospitals and UN buildings are used, we are going to have a problem that will not lead towards the solution we are seeking to achieve. Yeah. So I'm saying 
let us be men enough. If men want to fight, let men be men and yeah. fight and leave women and children out of our fight. But, Jeff, let's but, but, not but, but Jeff, fight. That's, that, that, that's exactly what, what has been happening here, that the people who are killed are people who've been fleeing. Like the report says snipers were shooting at people who were fleeing. They were not being used as human shields. They were fleeing. They're actually leaving their homes and going away. And these are the people that were killed. Well, those are allegations that must be investigated. Obviously, if they can be proven true, the ACDP will also condemn uh, shooting and or using snipers to shoot at women and children who are trying to find refuge. All right? As long as there can be evidence that there were no men hiding among them. Yeah. It's seldom that children will be alone, women will be alone. There are always men who are fighters who are among them. So I'm saying again, if it can be proven true yes. that there were no fighters among them, then obviously that should be investigated. And if it is found true, then those people who were used as snipers should be condemned and to face the wrath of the law. All right, Aisha, let's bring you in here. Uh, three issues maybe or so that would have come out from the response from ACDP. One is that uh, although they welcome the, the temporary ceasefire, more permanent ceasefire uh, would be most appreciated, and that could never happen until uh, Israel is allowed to exist as a state. But two, the hostages are returned, uh, and, and, and there's been this uh, neglect of reporting on, on that aspect of things. But two, there's continued use of women and children as human shields. Uh, hence, you are seeing the kind of numbers that the UN Human Rights Council report uh, would, would, would be um, uh, giving us. Um, uh, what are your thoughts and, and also on, on, on the UN Security Council resolution? Okay, so one, on the issue of Israel's right to exist, Israel is a state recognized by the United Nations. Um, you know, the reverence harking back to the old Hamas charter, not the new one, several decades old now, uh, really makes no sense here. Hamas has said it recognizes the right of Israel to exist, as have the various resistance groups in both Gaza, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem. So that is a no, no starter, non-starter, quite frankly. On the issue of hostages, is the Reverend also concerned about the 7,000 people taken hostages in Gaza alone since October, plus the tens of thousands of hostages languishing in Israeli prisons under administrative de detention prior to October 7th, including several hundreds of children, some of them imprisoned for over two or three years at this point. Is he as concerned about them? Because they are hostages too. Thirdly, the Reverend is decontextualizing the situation in Palestine, Israel, because he is starting with Oct October 7th. October 7th didn't come out of a vacuum. It came out of 76 years of occupation, torture, brutality, and ethnic cleansing, inclu including repeated attempts by Israel at its so-called euphemism, mowing the grass in Gaza, as we've seen periodically over the last couple decades. On the issue of the hostages, therefore, the hostages but there must be an equivalent and an equitable exchange of hostages on both sides. We can't only be looking at Israeli hostages. We need to be looking at hostages on both sides. On the issue of human shields, there is very little evidence, if any, that those tunnels, that those hospitals, that those UN buildings ever shielded Hamas fighters or that anybody was used as human shields. This is an old trope used by Israel and Zionists to justify the killing of women and children. In the last 24 hours alone, in Al-Shifa hospital alone, 13 children were killed at point blank range. 13 in the last 24 hours in one place in Gaza. That brings the total number of children killed since the beginning of October last year to 14,622. What does the Reverend has, have to say about that killing at point blank range? He asks for evidence. The evidence abounds all over social media, Al Jazeera, the Middle East Monitor, etc. These are time stamped, date stamped videos. 
the evidence is overwhelming that women and children whose husbands, brothers, sons, etc. have been killed again at point blank range are walking down streets fleeing and are being taken off by snipers one by one as though they are merely targets in a video game. This is shameful and disgraceful. Lastly, on the United Nations Security Council, it is a welcome decision, but it is disappointing in that the U.S. abstained and that it insisted on the changing of the uh, word permanent to lasting. Lasting meaning how long? Lasting could mean days, weeks, months, years. What we need is a permanent ceasefire and a full military withdrawal of Israeli troops from Gaza before anything else can happen. Yeah. Rev, I think you can I wait. Think yes, come in. I think it's important that the, the learned lady there, the expert of Middle East happenings, needs to acknowledge the fact that the very station she's on has shown evidence of hospitals being used by Hamas. Okay? When a building is, UN building is used, and it appears on South African television, on SABC, on Newsroom Africa. What should South Africans say? We are not watching Al Jazeera all the time. We know what Al Jazeera says. Sometimes we do watch. But I watch more SABC and Newsroom and E News. Those are the channels I look at most of the time. So if they show us pictures of um, buildings that are that belong to the UN being used, okay, then something is wrong there, okay? But secondly, there is a difference between hostages and prisoners. Now, she seems to be equating the two. They are not the same. There are, there are prisons in South Africa that also have children. So if a children commits a crime that needs to be punished and the child ends in prison, you cannot call that child a hostage. So it is important that we make a difference. Hostages and prisoners are not the same. To say there are many hostages languishing in Israeli prisons. Those children have not been tried in any court of law. They are under administrative detention, similar to detention without trial under South Africa's own apartheid regime. So All they right. are not convicted criminals in any sense of the word. No, okay. I, okay. I mean, you may be true. It's not everybody that has been convicted. In South Africa, also, you have children who are also not yet convicted. But when a person commits a crime, that is not a hostage. When a person commits a crime, whether it's a child or an adult, and they are arrested, there's no proof of those children who are committing yeah. crimes, Reverend. Oh, oh, They've just oh, oh, been oh, rounded oh, up just for being, for, for existing. Hold on, Aisha. I'll give you a chance to respond. Rev, Repa? Yeah, I, I was, I'm, I'm saying that if we cannot allow people who have committed a crime, who have done wrong, to be called hostages just because yeah. we want to say Israelis are also uh, keep keeping hostages just as Hamas is doing that. Let us not equate. Yeah. Let's separate prisoners from hostages. So I, 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 I want to draw you once again to this uh, uh, UN Human Rights Council report. It says, especially on that uh, note, right, they've done this um, uh, uh, investigation so with proof. Remember the ICJ said they must allow independent eyes to come in and actually have a look at what's going sure. on in there. This is what they are saying. These are independent people that went in. Thousands have been detained systematically subjected to uh, the, 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 the degrading treatment and inhumane treatment by the military uh, in, 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 in Israel. These are the ones that you're saying are prisoners, uh, not hostages. But this is what's happening to them. Well, I don't deny, I'm not here as a spokesperson of Israel or IDF. I'm not their spokesperson. I'm saying, she says that the Hamas charter has been changed. Few minutes, actually, from seven o'clock, I've been looking, checking the Palestinian charter, checking the Hamas charter. I have not yet found. Let your station do me a favor. Send me the latest charter. 
where the right to exist is mentioned. Because what I've been seeing is living together peacefully as neighbors, but nothing about existence. The yeah. issue is existence. Does Hamas recognize Israel to exist within safe and secure borders? No, that is an issue. So do you attach yourself, before I give uh, Aisha a chance to respond to a statement by your member that says uh, basically what uh, have been uh, reported so far are distorted facts that promote propaganda? Rev? Okay, repeat your question, sir. I'm saying do you attach yourself to that statement by uh, Marie Suka that says what has been reported are distorted facts that promote propaganda? Well, there are a lot of reports. I'm not sure specifically which report you're talking about. Marie Suka was making a statement. I'm ask, asking you. She says, it's time for men and women of integrity and morality to take a stand for peace. Uh, uh, justice is an important part of the peace and healing process. Therefore, leaders should not distort facts and promote propaganda. Are, are you saying well, that the facts that are out there are, are, are propaganda and distorted facts? Not necessarily. We do not know which statement she's referring to, okay? There are statements that are made all the time, all over, which are not accurate. So she is not specifically saying this statement is not accurate. So she is calling for all statements to be accurate as men of integrity and women of integrity. We must make statements that are accurate. So I cannot say specifically which statement she's talking about. That she can answer herself. But I'm saying, where I agree with her, when statements are made, they should be accurate and they should not promote propaganda. All right. Let's see. ACDP leader Reverend Kenneth Misha is still with us, and I've got to let him go. I understand he's got another commitment, but I quickly want international relations expert Aisha to, to respond to some of the issues that he's, he's raising. There's no charter that has changed, Aisha, but not only that, you, you are equating prisoners to hostages. Well, firstly, those so-called prisoners are not criminals in the sense that Mr. Reverend Meshwe is, is talking about because they are under administrative detention. The UN report clearly outlines that um, children, women, men, etc., all under administrative detention, not dissimilar to detention without trial in apartheid South Africa. I'll leave it at that with regarding to the, the, the so-called di distinction between prisoners and hostages. To me, there's no distinction because there's nothing proven against them. They've just been rounded up, detained, tortured, assaulted, forced to strip naked, raped, sexually assaulted, etc. The evidence is all there. There is detailed evidence coming out. And UN Special Rapporteur Francesca, Al, um, uh, Francesca has actually detailed a lot of this in her report. So I'm not going to go into that. Uh, Reverend Meshua may read it as he wills or not. On the issue of Marie Suka um, going on a Friends of Israel trip uh, to Israel, uh, of course, she is going to be hearing propaganda. And on that note, I'd like to actually challenge Reverend Meshwe to make visible and transparent the funding that he personally and his party generally gets from Zionists, particularly Zionist corporations and Zionist churches in the U.S. One. Secondly, on the issue of Hamas Charter, it is available online, Reverend. Go and read it for yourself. Really, there's no need for anyone to send it to you. Thirdly, on the issue of Christians in Palestine, Israel, is the Reverend aware that the only Christians in the region are actually Palestinians, that the Christians living in the city of Jesus in Bethlehem have been surrounded by a huge wall since 2004? Is he aware that people from more than a kilometer away from the church there are unable to even go to the church for Easter services? The same applies to the churches in Jerusalem, in the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, is he aware that the oldest church in Gaza was destroyed by the Israelis by a targeted strike during this latest rounds of, of atrocities in Gaza, which he has refused, by the way, to call genocide, even though the highest court in the world has said plausibly genocidal, and now the UN Special Rapporteur has detailed three of the five genocidal activities under the Genocide Con Convention being actually carried out by Israel. And lastly, what does the Reverend have to say? Assuming that his vision of an Israel for all Zionists comes to be, 
What does he have to say about the fact that many, many Jews, particularly Orthodox Jews, Zionist Jews, say it is acceptable to spit on Christians, as has happened numerous times? Would he like to go with his um, congregation to Israel and be spit upon? Because that is the level of respect that many Zionist Jews have or lack thereof for Christians. Rev, let's uh, wrap it up with that. I want, I want, I want to give you this thought uh, as as you are answering because uh, the repertoire on, on UN Human Rights Council says three acts uh, prescribed in the convention have been witnessed there. One, a killing uh, members of a group, direct action or neglect. So there is a deliberate starvation, there is an allowing of disease to spread, and there is. Uh, uh, all these conditions that are threatening the survival of a particular group. Two, they are causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of a group. There's physical and psychological harm that is being experienced by the people in Gaza. Three, there's a deliberate inflicting on a group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, saying these three things are happening there, and they form part of the convention, and therefore there is genocide going on there. You can answer it. Um, the issue of causing physical and mental harm, nobody would deny that it does happen, it does take place when there is war. It is a fact. That happens all the time when there is war. I have said, and I will repeat what I've said publicly, that the war in Gaza can be stopped within weeks if the international community and the UN can agree to do these three things, Mr. Mgludi. They are not commenting about them. Number one, all hostages must be released because that was the reason for the beginning of the war since 7 October last year. Okay? Release all hostages. Okay? Number two, shut all tunnels that were used to hide the hostages, to hide the, the fighters, to hide Hamas terrorists and those who are going into Israel. Shut them down. And thirdly, accept, even though your learned uh, friend there is saying that the, the latest charter says, my, for me, the critical words are the right to exist. I've looked, I repeat, I looked at Hamas charter. Before coming on this program, Mr. Mdouli, and those words are gone fighting yet. If you have a document, if you have a document, Mr. Mdouli, get that document, send me a copy, let's meet again, call that expert again, let's debate that document about the latest. Because I say until there is a document that says, an amendment that says, Israel now has the right to exist within safe and secure borders, then I will say what they are hoping to have, a peaceful coexistence between the Israelis and the Palestinians, will be possible. But until it happens, the war will continue. Why does, does these two, three things, okay, the second one, one can say, well, it's happening, the third one, which is uh, Hamas, uh, UN has ordered that uh, all hostages be released. Good. We ac I accept that as an individual. I accept that. And my organization applauds them for that. But the issue of the tunnels and how, again the right to exist, change the charter and let's get the books that are used in schools. What are the children taught about hating Israel, about fighting Israel, about killing Israel? If we have to bring the books there, Mr. Mbrudy, I will bring the books, some of the textbooks that are used there. Yeah. So the right to exist Within safe and secure borders right. is something that Israel must hear. Right. The international community must hear. We must hear. The Christians must hear. We must admit that in all religions, there will be people who take sides. In all even in Islam, there is mem members of the Muslim community who agree with Hamas, and there are those who don't agree with Hamas. So, to talk about the Palestinian Christians, there are Palestinian Christians who support what Hamas may be doing, and there are some who don't support that. So, it is not a unique thing in Gaza. 
that you have Palestinians who do not agree with what's happening there. There are men who agree, there are men who don't agree in all religions. But Mr. Mdudi, my wife is waiting for me. Thank you very much for having me tonight. If necessary, I'll come back, but let's have that Hamas charter where it is clearly stated that Israel has to, the right to exist within safe and secure borders. I appreciate you. Thank you very much uh, for coming on, uh, Rev. Aisha, let me thank you as well uh, for joining us. Uh, we'll leave it there for tonight and certainly uh, have this conversation once again.